seen lightning this heavy in years. I am forced to admit that maybe you weren't just scared of getting soaked in the rain. We truly did need to take this shelter after all. The lightning is too frequent to risk walking all the way back to the camp. And after hearing it struck the tree not too far away, maybe it is better that we were to take shelter. It also doesn't help that being almost as tall as any tree in the forest certainly increases the dangers to a giant. It is no wonder your voice was so frantic when you demanded we hunker down somewhere. You must have felt a hair's breath away from being struck by the angry sky, <laughs> sitting so high up on my shoulder. Have you ever been as high as that, little human? <laughs> I can imagine it would be extra frightening when you're used to being on the much safer, safe ground. Oh. <laughs> Don't pull such a long face. How can a giant not find reason to tease those of you who are just so adorably small? You should catch me around a band of elves or even dwarves sometime. I either drive them to blush, or just shake their fists at me for poking fun at them. However, it's all in harmless fun after all. Trust me, they retaliate just as fiercely. I've been called a big bumbling oaf even more times than I can remember. No sense in dishing it out if you are not prepared to take it as well. Go on. Hurl any insult at me. I fix skin. Nothing. And here I thought you were a feisty little thing. Hmm. I suppose your only assumption about giants would be fairly gruesome and terrible ones. I do not make for fun, Ribbon. I apologize. It's just so exciting for me to be speaking with a human. I can't help but wish to be on good terms as quickly as possible. Does that make me foolish? I can agree with that. Reasonable, but difficult. That is an adequate way of describing the path we've set before our people. But we have taken the first steps just by talking. And we are probably the very first human and giant to even converse with each other in over a century. This is just exhilarating for me. I do not excited as well. I'm worry. I see. It's understandable after all. But I meant what I said before. I'll prove to you just how drastically things have changed since our ancestors' time. And that humans have nothing to fear from us giants anymore. We would sincerely wish to bring humans back into the world, as thriving people as they once were. And you must believe me to some degree, or you would have run as soon as I put you down. I thought for a second that was your plan, by insisting we take shelter. Since you guided me to this cave, I assumed that you might run into the back and disappear. But once that I saw it was just a dead end, I realized how well I was wrong. And I'm glad that you stayed here with me. I'm also quite impressed, amazed that this cave mouth is even big enough for me. You must know this area very well to have thought of it. I swear, my people have scavenged half the mountainside and haven't found any others as large. All the caves we have found were too small for more than a few of us and not worth camping around. Truly a pity in our situation, sleeping in a cave would be a nice change from huddling in our tents and makeshift lintus. It has also been especially miserable with the unusually harsh weather as well. I 
should have known when I set out this morning that those clowns would form a thunderhead on a flip of a coin. I've learned that the wetter likes to turn fast enough to give you a whiplash up here. It was never like that in our valley. The mountain would take the brunt of the shrunk weather, mostly, and we were left with standard rainfall, bouts of occasional dry summer. Enough this cataclysmic has occurred in quite some time. I remember, when I was about seven, there was a tornado that ripped through the valley and tore down a few barns and part of one house. The damage was thankfully minimal. Beyond that, I think the greatest struggle we've had with nature for a very long time was keeping the pests away from the fields, flocks, and herds. And then the landslide came, wiped almost everything away. I've never seen anything like it. I really thank our lucky stars that we were at least given enough warning to escape with our lives. We could do nothing to save our crops or creatures. It was hard to say the least. We've had so many little lambs and calves this spring. It was truly painful to think about those poor little things being swept away. Thankfully, I did save two calves that have been hand-rearing since they were in the little crate in my house when the watchtower bells rang. It was easy to snatch them up in my arms and run away with them. Beyond all hopes, a few of my neighbors did manage to save a handful of their own livestock. So we've been continuing to feed them. I just hope I'm not fighting a losing battle. Considering our situation, all hands are needed for the work, and it might have been better to just cut our losses. But they were all I left me here. I just couldn't do that after, after I'd gone this far. Uh, <laughs> I am sorry I didn't mean to ramble. I just care very deeply about the livestock under my care. My family has been specializing in animal husbandry for such a long time. It's in my blood. Why are you looking at me like that? I don't even know what that expression is. So emotional. Well, of course. I'm not a rock, or even a log. Everyone has feelings. Did you perhaps think that giants didn't? Uh, oh, I see. I shouldn't be surprised that we've been portrayed as mindless, bloodthirsty monsters for your people's eyes. I suppose it must have truly seemed that way back then. The giants had no feelings or intellect beyond desire for human flesh. That is so tragic for so many reasons. And it is also entirely incorrect. Did you know, my grandfather once told me that giants are nothing more than oversized humans. That it was always thought that perhaps we had more in common than, say, elves and dwarves when compared to each other. I could only trust that he knew what he was talking about. But now, I can believe those words because I'm looking at a human with my very eyes. There's so much that I want to know about you. How have you been living for all this time? Do you have a secret trade deal with all the race of beings for supplies? Have you been able to grow your own crops or... Perhaps have you relied entirely on hunters like you? Hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. I am no hunter. Like I told you, I am a livestock farmer. They've just started sending me to check the traps because I have experience with animals. And the real hunters are 
needed for other parts of the forest. No, I don't have the skill or patience. I only prepare the catch after the fact. What about the other side of the mountain? Do your people fish or reap the bounty of the sea? That seems like one possible option. We've never ventured that far. Traveling through the woods is irritating when you're nearly as big as all the trees. I can also understand if you're hesitant to answer all of my questions. In your position, it would seem wise to keep your secrets close for as long as you can. However, think on this. Even if you did tell me where, how you all lived, do you really think we had the time and resources to waste trying to find where you all live for whatever reason? We are very far from our element, being on the mountainside rather than wide, open plains or rolling hills. We want nothing more than to rebuild our old home. So, why don't you compromise with me? Tell me just one or two things about human life, and I promise I won't ask again. Human, stay very still. There is a wolf at the mouth of the cave. It is no threat to me, but I may need to snatch you and kick the creature away if it charges around the fire at you. Wolves also hunt in packs, so... Human. Stars above. You are not... frightened. What are you... Do you know this creature? <laughs> well, I'll be damned. I've never seen any bee, cuddle, wolf, like their pet. How did this come about? doesn't even seem wary of me at all. Yeah, what kind of ferocious wolf would leap into a giant's lap without thinking? His tail is waggling and everything. My, he's also quite soft and very wet from all the rain. <laughs> my, I've never in my life have been this close to a wolf before, let alone one so friendly as well. They're usually a blight or not livestock. But this little fellow seems tame. You think that it came to fight you? Did you perhaps save him from a bad situation in her and his trust? Well, I'm intrigued. What's the story behind this? This is... that is incredible. Domesticated wolves. Really? This is truly impressive. How long ago did your ancestors begin that practice? You're not sure. Still, to be so common by this time, it must have started a number of years ago. I've never even heard of such a thing. I know that elves occasionally save a wild creature, and in return it becomes their companion. But to have full groups of wolves there, pets, and pets alone, I'm impressed. Wolves are the epitome of wilderness, after all. I'll never imagine that one could raise and breed them the same way I do for my own stock. <laughs> Clearly, he prefers you over me. I can't really blame him. You are his master, after all. Well, you didn't. You told me at least one unique fact about humans that I could have never have guessed. Even if you didn't really have much of a choice because of this spontaneous visitor. However, it made me happy. There has to be at least a million other fascinating things about your underground human society. And I can't wait to hear all about it, once we earn your trust. Maybe we could even both help each other out, and find a common ground by working together. But I won't press you any further about this. Once the storm lets up, 
Your little wolf friend can come along with us if he wishes, and we'll continue to our camp. I'm sure the others would be odd as well to interact with the tame wolf. I think it might be a pleasant way to ease the news as it is. I promise you have nothing to fear, but I admire how brave you are. Trust me, it can't be that easy. What's that? You're muttering. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, that makes me happy. I'm glad that I'm not all you fought giants were. I see. Human. I am thrilled that you think so. Like I said before, aside from our size... Us and humans are much closer than we might think. Beyond that, we are all the same. And that should be enough to mend our ties. <laughs>